The blood vessels of the body form a closed delivery system that begins and ends at the heart. Your goals for learning are to describe the general structure of blood vessel walls, to compare and contrast the types of blood vessels, to relate the blood pressures in the various parts of the vascular system to differences in blood vessel structure. Here's what you need to know. The relative roles of lining epithelium, smooth muscle, and connective tissue. The pathway of systemic and pulmonary circuits. To see definitions of terms, click the bold red words. Let's look at the general structure of blood vessel walls. The walls of all blood vessels, except the very smallest, are composed of three distinct layers or tunics. The tunics surround the central blood-containing space within the blood vessel, the lumen. The innermost tunic is the tunica intima, which is in intimate contact with the blood in the lumen. The tunica intima includes the endothelium that lines the lumen of all vessels, forming a smooth, friction-reducing lining. The tunica media, the middle layer, consists mostly of circularly arranged smooth muscle cells and sheets of elastin. The muscle cells contract and relax, whereas the elastin allows vessels to stretch and recoil. The tunica externa is the outermost layer of the blood vessel wall. It is composed of loosely woven collagen fibers that protect the blood vessel and anchor it to surrounding structures. Let's compare and contrast the three types of blood vessels, arteries, capillaries, and veins. Arteries are vessels that transport blood away from the heart. Because they are exposed to the highest pressures of any vessels, they have the thickest tunica media. The elastin allows them to stretch and recoil, and the smooth muscle allows them to constrict and dilate. Capillaries are the smallest vessels, the link between arteries and veins in the pathway of blood. Capillary walls consist of just a thin tunica intima, making them ideally suited for their role the exchange of materials between the blood and interstitial fluid. Veins are farthest from the heart, and so they experience the least pressure. Their walls are thinner than arterial walls, and their lumens are larger, allowing them to accommodate a large volume of blood. The tunica externa is the heaviest wall layer in veins. This photo micrograph shows an artery and a vein side by side. Note the thick tunica media in the artery and the thin walls of the vein. Using this figure, trace the complete pathway of blood through the different types of blood vessels. We will explore this pathway in more detail in the next few pages. In terms of relative size and function, arteries can be divided into three groups, elastic arteries, muscular arteries, and arterioles. Elastic arteries are closest to the heart, where they experience the greatest pressure as the heart forces blood into them. They have the greatest amount of elastin, enabling them to expand. When the heart relaxes, they recoil to propel blood onward during diastole. In this photo micrograph of a cross-section of the aorta, note the abundant elastin, which can be seen as wavy fibers in the thick tunica media. Click on this section of the aorta to see it stretch and recoil.
The graph shows blood pressure in various blood vessels of the systemic circulation. Note that the aorta experiences the widest variation in pressure of any vessel type. Its thick tunica media with elastin allows it to stretch and recoil to accommodate this pressure change as the heart pumps blood into it and then relaxes. Muscular arteries deliver blood to specific body organs. They have relatively more smooth muscle and less elastin than elastic arteries, enabling them to actively constrict and relax. In the graph of blood pressure in various vessels, note that the muscular arteries experience some decline in pressure. Arterioles are the smallest arteries. Their tunica media is almost entirely smooth muscle, allowing the arterioles to constrict and relax. Vasomotor fibers regulate the activity of the smooth muscle. This regulation is crucial because small changes in blood vessel diameter greatly influence blood pressure and blood flow. Click the nerve to see how increasing sympathetic activity affects blood vessel diameter. Click the nerve again to see how decreasing sympathetic activity affects blood vessel diameter. In the graph of blood pressure throughout the circulation, note that the steepest drop in blood pressure occurs in the arterioles, which offer the greatest resistance to blood flow. Note also that blood flow no longer pulses by the time it goes through the arterioles. In terms of relative size and function, arteries can be divided into three groups. Capillaries consist of only a thin tunica intima, allowing exchange of materials between blood and tissues. Blood flow regulation occurs at the capillary beds. The terminal arteriole brings blood to the capillary bed. The shunt is a short vessel that directly connects the feeder arteriole and the post-capillary venule at the opposite end of the bed. Exchanges of materials take place between tissue cells and the blood in the true capillaries. The precapillary sphincter is a cuff of smooth muscle fibers that surround the root of each true capillary, acting as a valve to regulate the flow of blood into the true capillary. Click on a precapillary sphincter to see how it affects blood flow through the capillary bed. In the graph of blood pressures, note that blood pressure is fairly low in the capillaries. High pressures would rupture the fragile capillaries and force solute-containing fluids out of the bloodstream into the interstitial space. Venules are formed when capillaries unite. In larger venules, both a sparse tunica media and a thin tunica externa are present. Click on the box to enlarge. The smallest venules, which drain capillaries, consist entirely of endothelium around which a few fibroblasts congregate.
In the graph of blood pressures, note that pressure continues to drop as blood flows through the venules, encountering further resistance. Venules join to form veins. Veins usually have three distinct tunics, but their walls are always thinner and their lumens larger than those of corresponding arteries. The tunica externa is the thickest wall layer. In the graph of blood pressure, note the low pressure in the veins. Because blood pressure within veins is low, they can be much thinner walled than arteries without danger of bursting. However, the low pressure condition demands some special adaptations to help return blood to the heart. Venous valves, the muscular pump, and the respiratory pump all assist in returning blood to the heart. Venous valves are hinge-like flaps formed from folds of the tunica intima. Venous valves are most abundant in the veins of the limbs, where the upward flow of blood is opposed by gravity. The one-way venous valves prevent backflow as blood travels toward the heart. Click on a valve to see the direction of blood flow. In the muscular pump, contracting skeletal muscles press against veins, forcing blood toward the one-way valves. Pressure changes occurring in the ventral body cavity during breathing create the respiratory pump that sucks blood upward toward the heart. As we inhale, Pressure in the thoracic cavity decreases. Meanwhile, pressure increases in the abdominal cavity, squeezing abdominal veins. These unequal pressures create an upward sucking effect that pulls blood toward the heart. Here's a summary of what we've covered. Of the three types of vessels, Arteries have the thickest tunica media, allowing stretch, recoil, and vasoconstriction. Veins have relatively thick tunica externa. And capillaries are the thinnest, allowing exchanges of materials. Blood pressure varies in different parts of the vascular system. Vessel structure reflects this variation in pressure. Structural adaptations of veins assist in returning blood to the heart.